Today's Daily Dose of Math is about giving a legend to explain how you're scaling your axes when you draw a graph. So on this somewhat crooked looking graph paper, I'm going to put axes so that I can make a graph from this table of values. I need an x-axis and a y-axis, and often we're making the decision do we want one of those graphs that's shaped sort of like an L, where we're only in the top right quadrant, or do we want the plus shaped graph where we have all four quadrants? In this case, when I look at my values and I see these negative numbers, I realize that this is a more appropriate type of graph. So that's the type I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw the x and y axes first. So I'm using a different color so we can see it a little better. And I draw the lines on the graph paper. And I put an arrow here, label it as the x-axis. I put an arrow here and I label it as the y-axis. Make sure you do that. You don't have to put arrows on the left side or on the bottom. Now, how do I want to scale these axes? One of the complications we have here, even on graph paper, but it's worse when you're doing this on a chalkboard, is it's harder to see. It's even hard to see the different colored axes in this video. So when I put little lines and little numbers to scale my axis, it's going to be very hard to see them. But even if I do that, I still need to give a legend where I explain how I'm scaling the two axes. That's what this is about. And in this case, since it's hard to see anyway, I'm not going to put little lines and numbers. I'm just going to let the legend explain how the graph is arranged. Then I look at my numbers and I see rather normal looking x values, negative one, negative two, positive one, positive two. It's going to be easy to fit those. And in fact, my curve might be a little squished towards the y-axis since these numbers aren't really very big at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make every two squares equal to one unit. So that means I have to put in my legend x-axis. I need to do this for both axes. So I want to be clear for the x-axis, 0.5 centimeters, which is the length of a side of the little square on the graph paper. Now that is referring to normal size graph paper, not this giant chalkboard graph paper. But we're talking about what we would do if we were doing this on a page. Most graph paper, the squares are 0.5 centimeters by 0.5 centimeters is equal to, and then I have to explain how many units fit in a square? Since I want to do two squares for each unit, that means 0.5 centimeters represents 0.5 units. Now, if we had a situation and the x values were representing, say, number of hours, I would write 0.5 hours. Since there's no situation explained, I'm just using the word units as my unit to point out that yes, you should actually include the unit in your legend when you're explaining what you're doing. Now for the y-axis, I have a quite different situation. We still have the squares being 0.5 centimeters in height. And that's equal to if we try to make them 0.5 units, we can't fit these huge numbers on here. So what we're going to do is make 0.5 centimeters is equal to 10 units. Now we can start graphing because we've decided on the scale of our graph. 0, 0.030 is therefore here. Then negative 120, negative 1 is two squares to the left. Remember how we scaled the x-axis. Negative 120 is here. Negative 210, therefore, is here. 140 is here. And 250 is here. And now I'm going to draw a line through this. It turns out this was a linear function that I graphed. 
It would be quite messy for me to try to draw little lines and numbers on this graph. It would be hard to see on the video and it gets messy even on a piece of paper where it is a bit easier to see. But it's unnecessary if I do this and then I'm able to use this information to help me put my points in the right places and draw my graph. It might seem like an awful lot of information, but the key information is what has been underlined here. And this makes it easier to do your graph in a way that will work and is easy to read. The person who is reading your graph afterwards can see what they need to see and it's put into perspective by the information you gave them in your legend. That is today's Daily Dose of Math. Please like, subscribe, and share.